Oh, hey guys, Quinn Hennick here, doctor of physical therapy from, hold on, oh, okay, from Juggernaut Training Systems. We're gonna talk about foam rolling and, and different mobility implements that are commonly used to try to optimize movement. So we'll talk about you know, what you, you'll get in the blog world or a lot of videos going out these days, throwing out different buzzwords, you know, breaking up scar tissue, releasing adhesions, restoring sliding surfaces, and all of this sounds really great, but we've got to kind of look into the literature to see what we're actually doing with things like foam rollers, lacrosse balls, bands, and, and how they help us. So if you look at the research, they started uh, this type of thing in animal models, and what they found in, in little tiny rats is that they could take these metal tools, those things that we use in uh, physical therapy practice quite often, and they could scrape on these little rat ligaments and the collagen actually remodeled. So if they were injured, let's say their MCL ligament in their knee was injured, they could take these tools and scrape on the tissue and actually over the course of weeks would remodel the tissue compared to control groups who didn't use that modality. And so we extrapolated that then to be useful for humans as well. The problem is in these rat models, these rats were unconscious and the tools were human sized metal tools. So you have this poor little unconscious rat with supraphysiological pressures to the tendon. And what we found in human models is that we're unable to recreate that type of pressure to a large degree. So what we found in, in fascial tissues like the deep thigh are very, very thick, fibrous bands. It takes thousands of pressures, thousands of pounds of pressure of force to make 1% shear in those tissues. And so we're seeing that it's very, very difficult to actually structurally break up our human tissue in the moment. And if you think about it, it's very, very important and probably a good thing because we had a barbell on our back that weighed 300 pounds, we would probably disintegrate right, if our tissues were that fragile. But we can't argue with the fact that after we get done rolling on a foam roller, using a lacrosse ball on a certain tender spot, you get up and you feel a little bit better. So we've got to look to see what is this stuff actually doing. And what we think that it's doing is creating some type of neurophysiological response. So it's a, it's a nervous system input, it's a sensory input that we're giving to ourselves. So think about an example of if I jam my finger, I'm playing basketball, the ball smacks me in the finger and I intuitively shake it like that and all of a sudden the pain is kind of numbed. And so it's a sensory input to override another sensory input. And something like a foam roller, a lacrosse ball is a pretty concentrated stimulus. And so what we think we're doing with that is we're using that implement to supersede other things that we're feeling. It's all about perception. So if, if we're squatting and I feel a little tightness in the front of my hip or in my hip flexor, I'm perceiving that tension. I roll on a foam roller, I get up, I squat again, and that tension is lessened, but I haven't structurally on a cellular level broken up the muscular molecules or the fascial tissues. We just, it doesn't work like that. Our tissues are more resilient than that. However, it's very important. You change your perception. You feel like you're able to move a little bit better. And then over the course of time, when you load that new movement in training, that's what's gonna recreate and, uh, a change in your tissues. So that's the what, as far as the mechanism. Neurophysiological response of some sort. We, don't, we can't explain it exactly as it stands now, but that's what we think is happening. Now, why is this important? So I get the question a lot. What does it matter if it works, it works? Why do we have to know the mechanism? Well, it's important because of implementation. So what we see a lot, and, and I kind of have my own little corner in the gym and I'm you know, looking at the entire facility, I'm judging everyone, you know, that's what I do as a physical therapist, but I see people spending 20, 30, sometimes upwards of 45 minutes on a foam roller you know, going from head to toe, every square inch of their body. And so if we think about the mechanism, if these are short-term neurophysiological changes that we're creating, they're not gonna last forever. And so if you spend 10, 20, 30, 40 minutes on a foam roller, you likely have lost the short-term benefit from the first five or 10 minutes. You would have to do that area again. And so the, the, the importance here is implementation and duration. 
So shorter bouts of things like sticking a foam roll on your quad or in your hip flexor or in your pec, using a band to feel like you're clearing space in the hip, it's all the, it's all the same mechanism. Shorter bouts create the change. 30 seconds, 60 seconds is not any less effective than five minutes straight. If you get up and you feel a change, the mobility implement did its thing, right? So then when do we implement something like that? If we know, okay, shorter bouts in between your movements or in between your warm up sets of your training lift is a great time to go back and use a mobility implement because it's in between your warm up sets. What you can do is 20, 30 seconds, foam roll, whatever feels tight, and then you're right into a loading strategy. So we'll take a squat, for example. You do empty bar, five, 10, 15 reps, or whatever you do is warming up for your back squats. And then you go and you foam roll your glutes, foam roll your quads, your calves. Go back, load up the bar a little bit heavier. You've perceived less tightness because of the foam roller, and now you're loading that new range of motion. Three or four rounds of that, you've probably, by the time you're up to your working sets in your back squat, you probably feel pretty good. But what you've done is you've shortened the bout that you use the implement and you load it directly after. And that's what we found to be the most effective use of your time and thinking about the actual mechanism of how this stuff works, the best way to implement it. So, if you guys have questions about that, you can leave a comment down in that section and I'll go back and answer that. If you're looking for a healthcare provider who needs to understand your athletic goals, search the directory at clinicalathlete.com. Thanks guys. Grind Sports Nutrition is committed to providing athletes with the highest quality supplements to fuel their training. Grind products are designed by Renaissance Periodization and contain only ingredients and dosages with substantial bodies of evidence to support their effectiveness. No fluff or fillers. Get on your grind because your success is earned, not given.